Tonight, a former Baltimore County educator comes forward with a strong message to school leaders. Get student violence under control. As Project Baltimore's Chris Papps explains, this former educator says the violence took such a toll on their health, it forced this educator to leave the profession. Before the incident, what was your life like? I had friends. I was happy. I socialized. I was thriving. And now? I just feel like the shell of myself. I'm, I'm just kind of existing. This former Baltimore County School Administrator does not want to be identified due to mental health treatment stemming from an incident at their former job. After this interview, after I talk about it today, I have, I'm ready to, to no longer discuss it unless absolutely, absolutely necessary. 20 years in public education, and it all fell apart in 20 seconds. That short period of time ended a career that I loved. Project Baltimore blurred this school fight video to protect the identity of minors involved. But when it broke out a few years ago, this educator tried to stop it and was pulled to the ground by a student who came up from behind. I remember uh, just feeling the jerk. <laughs> yes, that was the catalyst. As the physical wounds were treated, mental ones emerged. Though the educator had seen fights and intervened in violence before, this time was different. The student had approached from behind, creating a fear of the unknown that began to creep into everyday life. I'm always afraid of things. I find myself withdrawn from friends, and so I just stayed in this constant fight flight state of mind. The symptoms all pointed to one thing, post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. Have you seen an increase in educators coming to you? Yes. Faith Adebule is a therapist who's treated many educators, including the one who spoke with Project Baltimore. Not only is there an increase in people reaching out for help, there's also people changing careers, quitting their jobs because, or changing, like, just environments altogether. Adabule says school violence is getting worse, and it makes sense. She says the COVID shutdowns slowed the emotional development of many children as they isolated at home. Once students returned to school, Adabule says many children lost the ability to handle situations rationally, which has resulted in more fights. At the same time, schools have changed the way they deal with violent students and educators are dealing with the fallout. The National Education Association, the country's largest teachers union, surveyed its members in January on key issues causing teachers to leave the job. 76% of educators said student behavioral issues are a serious problem. Over time, the system has just, rather than dealt with it, they just kind of either moved on or just adjusted as much as they can to make it now almost a norm. Punched, kicked, uh, thrown bottles at me. Project Baltimore over the years has interviewed other educators who were exposed to school violence, developed PTSD, and received a disability retirement. Baltimore City teachers like Scott Miller Phoenix and this Baltimore County teacher who asked not to be identified. I would come home exhausted just from having three and four panic attacks a day. But it's not just teachers and educators who face long-term consequences from the violence. We are at a crisis here. Those most affected, many would argue, are those committing the violence. Ryan Coleman, the president of the Randallstown chapter of the NAACP, has recently called on Baltimore County schools to issue long-term suspensions to violent students to send a message that this behavior is not acceptable. This is really the, the school to prison pipeline here, okay? We're not showing our children what proper behavior is. And so they leave school thinking it's okay to hit a person. So I think sometimes we have policies that protect the perpetrators more than the people who are attacked. The educator we interviewed has since been granted a disability retirement but still thinks about that day and the student who caused the injuries and faced no consequences. 
Fox 45 is not identifying the student because he was a minor, but we looked him up on online court records. In 2018, a couple years after this fight, that student was arrested in Woodlawn and charged with second degree assault. He spent nearly two weeks in jail. At the time, he was 18 years old. I think people take for granted how uh, violence in schools can impact individuals. Kids get hurt too, adults get hurt. It's not something to be taken lightly. I'm Chris Pabst and this is Project Baltimore.